carbon frame, carbon fork, carbon seat post, carbon saddle, carbon saddle rails, carbon bottle cages, carbon Garmin mount, carbon integrated bar and stem, carbon headset spaces, carbon rims, and carbon spokes. Oof, I need to lay off the carbon fiber. I, I definitely have a problem. Um, maybe just one more will be fine. I'm gonna pop that in the basket. Right, time for the sponsor spot and Sirocco drop in back in, which is uh, which is cool. So I, I said before, but I think Sirocco is a really good fit for this channel. They produce some really good quality gear for a really good price as well, if you ask me. Now they sent me this the other day. This is one of their kind of more race focused jerseys, really nice and light and comfy out on the bike, which is really great, especially in this crazy <laughs> hot weather that we've got. Um, plus the fit is really good. I often find with cheaper jerseys, I end up having to take extra material out of the sides to get it to fit properly. But with the Sirocco stuff, just fits really nicely out of the box, which is cool. Plus the materials they use are, are good quality and it means they wash really well too, which I think is quite, is quite important. So uh, in, in this shot here, this particular jersey, I've had in and out of the wash dozens and dozens of times over the last year and it still looks pretty box fresh if you ask me. Um, so yeah, I, I honestly, I, I really like Sirocco. They're, they're great to work with and they produce some really decent cycle kit. Um, so yeah, if you wanna help me out a little bit on the channel here, um, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you can get hold of jerseys, but also uh, cycle glasses and, and bib shorts as well. Uh, <laughs> then yeah, use my link in the description below and grab yourself an extra 10% off your order. Anyway, um, all that aside, let's crack on with the episode. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another barely passable Trace Fellow production. My name, as always, is uh, yeah, Luke. So in, in truth, this is getting slightly ridiculous now. So the vast, the vast majority of my bike here behind me is produced from carbon fiber. But today we add one more thing to the mix. Well, in truth, it's actually more like uh, three, three things, but that's, that's beside the point. So <laughs> some of you will know, I've got a bit of a history on this channel with a company called Sensar. Now, Sensar produce some really well-priced group sets out of China, and I'm sure a lot of you will have seen them all over AliExpress and eBay. And I'm currently running their 11-speed Empire group set on, the, on my bike up here. And I've covered this in a lot of detail already, actually, in this episode up here. So check that out if you haven't already. Okay, so uh, up to right now, I am 1,232 miles into this group set. So what's that? Just under 2,000 kilometers. And it still works perfectly fine. There's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. But the allure of that carbon fiber is <laughs> it's too strong. So uh, in this box right here, I've got fundamentally the same group set as the one that I've got on the bike. So it's an 11 speed Sensar Empire group set. But this one here is gussied up with a little dash of that, of that delicious carbon fiber goodness. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's check this rude boy out. Now, one thing that I negated to mention is that Sensar actually sent this to me for free. I haven't paid for this group set, but they didn't ask me to say anything or, or keep it positive or anything like that. They literally just posted them to me, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> so this is all it's all me, baby. Uh, anyway, there we have it. Full transparency for you lot. So um, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, let's show you what you get in the box with this, this group set. So first things first, you get a little instruction manual here to help you kind of set up the group set and set the indexing up and stuff like that. So pretty cool. And now time for the money shot. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. We've got both shifters here, the front derailleur and the rear derailleur. Simple stuff. So let's check out these shifters. So here they are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and they are essentially identical to the regular Sensor Empire shifter. I'll bring you a normal one in here. Apart from the fact that obviously on the normal one, this brake lever is made of aluminium, whereas on the new one here, this is made of, uh, well, it's fully carbon fiber to save a little bit of weight. And the carbon fiber looks really lovely and the finishing on it is really nice. Now the way they function is exactly the same as the old version. So for those of you that don't know on Sensor, 
big swing to move up the range, small swing to move down. So that's up to, that's down to. Now this might seem a little bit odd for those of you that are used to uh, the Shimano way of doing things with two separate lever arms, one, two. So on Shimano, obviously up, down. But um, yeah, once you get used to it, it's actually really reliable and, and the shifting is nice and snappy. It's basically the same as the SRAM double tap system for those of you that are familiar with that. Now, this little uh, lever arm in here is aluminium, which is a pretty big deal. So let, let me let me explain. So this little arm in here, this is pretty intrinsic to how the whole shifter functions. So basically, when you uh, move the brake lever to make a shift, this little arm in here transfers that movement into the shifting mechanism inside the body of the shifter. So you can see there, it pushes it across. Um, and yeah, it basically, it's, it's how the shifter functions. Now on the previous version of this group set, for those that don't know, this little lever arm here used to be made out of plastic and it snapped while I was out on a ride so I couldn't shift at the front. But Sensar came through uh, and fixed the issue. And now, uh, yeah, they're all made out of aluminium and these tasty carbon bad boys have that updated aluminium shifting arm, which is cool. So this should increase durability and shifting at the front and the back, yeah, should be pretty snappy. So. Muy bueno. Now one more quick thing, and it's a feature of Sensar shifters that I don't know if I've demonstrated before, but basically out of the box, Sensar shifters prevent you from shifting while braking. So you can imagine I'm moving along, I can kind of shift normally, but then once I start braking, I can't shift anymore. And it's because of this little lever here, that one there. So if I hold that down, I can then, I can then shift again. If I release it, yeah, I'm prevented from shifting. Now I believe by default, uh, Shimano allows this. So let me grab a 105 shifter here. So here we go. If I'm braking, yeah, Shimano allows you to shift while braking by default, but Sensar doesn't. Now, if you wanted to get that functionality back, you, all, you, all you'd have to do is basically tie that down with a little bit of dental floss, and then you could get it back. But like I said, out of the box, you're prevented from shifting while braking. Not a big deal for me because I never shift while I'm on the brakes, but um, yeah, if you wanted to get that functionality back, you can. So a little bit of a quirk with these Sensar shifters. Anyway, let's check out the derailleurs for this fancy carbon group set. Okay, so here is the front derailleur. Uh, it's similar to older SRAM designs, if you're familiar with those. A pretty generic yaw style front derailleur. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing too special. And it's the same as pretty much all of the front derailleurs across the Sensar lineup. Um, and no carbon on this either, unfortunately. This is this is aluminium on the top, and then this is this is steel. Now the tension spring on the back here, it's pretty strong. I've got to say, and that strong spring, I think, is what contributed to uh, the the lever arm in the previous version snapping when it was made of plastic, as I, as I mentioned earlier. But these carbon ones here, these have the upgraded aluminium lever arms inside them, so uh, yeah, it should have no trouble shifting this front derailleur. But let's check out the rear, because that's pretty funky. Right then, here's the uh, <laughs> yeah, here's the rear derailleur. Now it is in fact basically identical to the, the stock one. At least this part is identical. The difference being they've obviously slapped this massive oversized carbon pulley cage <laughs> on the back here with these pretty interesting rainbow colored aluminium <laughs> jockey wheels here. Um, now I've done a whole video on these oversized pulley cages before, which you can check out up here. But for those of you that don't know, oversized pulley cages like this allegedly increase drivetrain efficiency in two ways. The first is that the larger diameter of these wheels actually decreases the angles the chain has to move through, therefore reducing friction in the chain. And the fact that they're larger in diameter means the bearings inside them don't have to spin as fast as you're pedaling, therefore reducing reducing drag. Now, in ideal lab conditions, I think you get about a 1% efficiency gain maybe, so I, I suspect out on the road, having this makes zero real world difference. Um, but maybe one day you'll meet a GCN presenter out in the wild and they'll swan up to you and they'll say, wow, that's a pretty cool uh, oversized pulley gauge. And that right there will make it all worth it. Maybe, anyway. Now, one thing I don't really like about this rear derailleur is the fact that the jockey wheels here, they use ceramic bearings. Now, it might seem like a good thing, but I'm just not a massive fan of the style of ceramic bearings that these use. So let me uh, pull this apart and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right, so while you're here, if you're uh, enjoying the video, which I hope you are, uh, then uh, yeah, if you could subscribe and maybe hit the like button as well, that'd be really, really cool. Um, honestly, really helps me out and helps appease the mighty. YouTube algorithm. 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's crack on. Okay, so I've, I've pulled the jockey wheels out and this is basically a pretty standard cartridge bearing. And you can see it's got a black rubber seal on each side there. And the job of that is basically to keep moisture, grit and dirt out of the actual bearing itself to keep it running nice and smoothly. Now my problem with these cheaper ceramic style bearings, and you can see I've removed the little end caps which sit over the top of it there. My problem is that they don't come with any seals. So if I zoom in, you'll see those little white balls there. Those are the actual ceramic balls of the ball bearing. And I find grit and dirt quite easily finds its way in there. And after a few hundred miles, especially if you cycle in the wet, they don't spin as freely and they get a little bit crunchy. So what I'll be doing is replacing these with these sealed bearings and you can just kind of push them into place. So these are, if I show you, 689 RS bearings. If I, there we go. You'll be able to see 689 RS. And these are about £1.50 each on eBay. If that, I actually got these out of a set of old jockey wheels. Um, so I'll be replacing those ceramic bearings. Now, a lot of people have asked me if I can actually take the seals off of this bearing here and put them onto this ceramic one, but I've tried it and it, it just doesn't work. They just don't spin freely when they've got those seals over the top, but they're not expensive, so I'll be, I'll be replacing them. Now, ultimately, it's not a massive deal, and I know a lot of people that have used these cheaper style ceramic bearings for thousands of miles with absolutely no problems, but I just prefer to have a, a sealed bearing in there because they're a little more maintenance-free. I find. Um, anyway, if you want to delve into this topic in a little bit more detail, I actually have two videos on it here and here, so you can check those out later if you fancy it. Anyway, let's move on. Right then, the all important uh, weigh in. So, first, let's check out the standard Sensor Empire group set with the aluminium brake levers. Shifters coming at 468 grams, short cage rear derailleur. 197 grams, front derailleur, 96 grams. So a total there of 761 grams. So just for comparison, the equivalent 105 R7000 setup, 805 grams. Um, so yeah, let, let's check this carbon sensor empire group set. So front derailleur first comes in at a predictable 96 grams because it's exactly the same as the, as the regular one. Uh, the funky oversized rear derailleur, 207 grams. So only 10 grams more than the regular one, not too bad at all, in my opinion, considering um, what you get. And finally, the shifters, 410 grams, so around 60 grams less than the standard ones. Total group set weight here, 713 grams. So no major weight savings, but you get an oversized rear derailleur cage and save 50 grams compared to the regular Sensor Empire. As my granddad used to say, that's better than a poke in the eye. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, as long as it performs, could be a winner. So let's get it installed. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the, the group set that I've currently got on the bike is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So this is the standard Sensar Empire group set with the aluminium brake lever arms. Yeah, nothing wrong, not, not broken or anything like that. I just wanna try out that fancy carbon goodness. So <laughs> yeah, in terms of install, I'm hoping it should be relatively straightforward actually, because I'm gonna reuse all of the existing cable housings that are already here because they're only about six months old and they're absolutely fine, really. So all I'll need to do is remove the bar tape down to about here, pull the old shifter off with the with the cables, put the new shifter on, run cables through the existing existing housings, and that should be pretty much it. So yeah, hopefully we should run into no problems, but <laughs> you never really know until you start these things. So let's get cracking. A few moments later. Right, two minutes into the uh, strip down and I'm already facing an issue. So yeah, let me, let me, let me demonstrate the problem. So this is the, the new derailleur here, and see this little silver piece this is what screws into the derailleur hanger and you can see here that spins nice and freely in there see that spinning so that you can easily screw it into the derailleur hanger and this here this is the derailleur hanger so this bolt screws into there but this aluminium piece here on this derailleur is completely seized within here so it will no longer spin separate from the actual derailleur so i've managed to unscrew it this far but then it's just completely seized up and <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't get it out. So uh, yeah, just a little example of some of the things you face when you start tearing your bike apart. But yeah, give me a few minutes. I'll see if I can remedy it. Five minutes later. Okay, so I managed to get this off and I've saved the derailleur hanger as well. And, and here it is. In order to do that, 
I actually had to saw a little piece off there because it is completely welded in there. It should spin inside this, but for whatever reason, I've really wrenched on it and it just doesn't spin at all. And you can see on this new one here, it spins nice and freely because that's what enables you to screw it into the derailleur hanger. But yeah, this one, it's completely welded in there. I have no idea why that's happened. But anyway, that derailleur is toast, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but still, managed to get it off, so let's continue. Okay, so once the rear derailleur issue uh, was sorted, install was actually very straightforward. As mentioned, I reused all of the existing cable housings, so it was literally just a case of transplanting those new carbon shifters onto the bike and then uh, running new cables through. Now, this probably wouldn't have been as simple if I was moving to say a Shimano group set, as some of the cable housings would probably need to be a slightly different length. But as this group set is literally just a carbon copy, okay? Of, uh, of the uh, existing one. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was super easy. I even managed to reuse my bar tape. 10 out of 10 would sensor again. Now, just to mention, I've been uh, very brief with the, uh, with the install steps here, but I've actually covered the full install of one of these group sets from start to finish in a previous video right here. Uh, so yeah, check that video out if you want to see those steps in some bounteous <laughs> levels of detail. Right then, install is uh, installs done, and I've treated myself to a rattler. Uh, those of you of, of Cornish descent will be aware of the provenance of this rather cheap cider. Uh, mm. Oh, tasty. Uh, <laughs> anyway, performance, yeah, um, honestly, really good. Ju just as good, if not a smidgen better than the stock Sensei Empire setup that I've uh, literally just taken off this bike. Um, yeah, shifting at the front, nice and reliable. Those updated aluminium lever arms inside the shifters there, making short work of that quite stiff front derailleur. Um, now there are still uh, three clicks of the shifter to get from the very top position on the front derailleur down to the bottom. Um, I wasn't a fan of that to begin with, but actually I've got used to it quite quickly and it doesn't really bother me much these days. So yeah, all good. Right, so shifting at the back, um, honestly, honestly, really, really nice. Now, uh, every time I put one of these gargantuan oversized pulley cages on my bike, I assume it's going to absolutely screw up the, uh, the shifting performance. I mean, rear derailleurs are quite precise pieces of engineering at the end of the day with the uh, very precise throw distances necessary to maintain proper indexing. But still, with this massive oversized pulley cage on, shifting is still super crispy. Um, it's a fraction better even than the stock derailleur it replaced. Now for those of you that have watched this video up here, you will know that with the stock derailleur, uh, shifting was perfectly fine up and down the range apart from this one area. Basically in the big ring, the stock derailleur got caught up occasionally between the ninth and 10th sprocket on the cassette. And here's a clip of that. It's this next upshift from 10 to nine where it, where it sometimes gets caught out. So you can see we're ticking away because it's not quite made the upshift. Now shifting at, at the rear with this updated carbon setup that I've uh, just thrown on the bike, um, it's not 100% flawless, but it's pretty flipping close, I'll tell you that much. So yeah, check this out. Okay, so you will have literally just seen on the group set that I've only just pulled off the bike, the stock Sensei Empire derailleur got a little bit hung up between the ninth and 10th gears. But on this updated carbon version, yeah, it doesn't seem to be so much of an issue. So let me demonstrate here. So I'll, uh, I'll drop down the cassette uh, first. So did that, no problem. And now we'll jump up one at a time. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, um, doesn't seem to happen on this group set. So pretty impressed. Nice. So yeah, overall performance of this uh, carbon fiber Empire group set, pretty, pretty flipping good. I've got to say, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Now, unsurpri unsurprisingly, it's very similar to the to the stock Sensor Empire setup that that it's replaced. Um, even though the shifting at the back is 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 slightly better actually. But still, all of this aside, is it worth it? Right then. So the first thing to consider here is, uh, yeah, it's cost, isn't it? So uh, yeah, the stock, fully stock. Sensor Empire setup, 80 quid for that. 
the stock aluminium shifters with the carbon pulley cage that I've got here, 120 pounds, and the full carbon setup that I've just installed, 165 pounds. Now, from a strictly functional perspective, the fully stock setup and this carbon one that I've, I've got here perform pretty much identically. I mean, it just so happens that the shifting at the back on this particular setup is ever so slightly better than the stock one that I've just pulled off. But I think unless you ride them back to back, you'll be unlikely to notice a difference, I think. So I guess it comes down to, uh, to three, three things. Number one, how much you value that oversized pulley cage there and the potential efficiency gains that can bring to your, to your drivetrain. Number two, the weight savings. I mean, depending on the group set that this is replacing, with this carbon one here, you could look to drop 50 to 100 grams off the bike, and that is not to be sniffed at, if you ask me. And number three, I guess it also depends on how much you value that carbon fiber bling factor, because if you ask me, it does look flipping tasty when it's on the bike and does have a bit of an edge on the uh, on the stock sensor setup. I mean, <laughs> even these frankly ridiculous rainbow jockey wheels are starting to grow on me. Um, but is this carbon one worth twice the price of the stock setup? I mean, for the budget-minded out there, probably, probably not. But for the weight weenies among you looking to drop a few extra quid on some bombastic uh, carbon carbon fiber goodness, then yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely definitely worth a look. Ultimately, 165 pounds for a for a carbon fiber endowed uh, group set that comes damn close to 105 shifting performance. Um, yeah, an interesting proposition, I think. Now, a few extra bits before you depart for the uh, evening. <laughs> Number one, that stock derailleur issue that I faced during during the install where it got kind of jammed up and, and that screw wouldn't move. Um, that could have been my fault. I'm not really too sure. I'd had that particular derailleur on and off a number of bikes over the years without any issues at all, but I'd never specifically oiled or maintained that particular kind of uh, screw or bolt in the in the derailleur. So uh, yeah, with this new one here, I put a little bit of oil in there to potentially prevent that from happening in the future. But with the stock one that I had to saw, saw off, that could have been my fault. I'm, I'm just difficult to tell, really. Um, uh, and number two, a little word for you on the longevity of this group set. Now, on the previous iteration of this group set, so uh, rev revision two, I suppose, the internal lever arm was made of plastic, as I, as I mentioned earlier, that's the one that broke on me uh, a, a while back now. Um, but on the, on the brake lever, there was also this little plastic insert, and that was presumably there to reduce friction against those moving parts. On the updated version three of the Empire group set that we're actually, that we're dealing with here, that internal lever arm, that was upgraded from plastic to aluminium, and that was a, you know, that was a good upgrade, good, good decision, I think. But that little plastic insert on the brake lever, that was, that was removed. For, for version three. Now that's not so much of an issue on the stock shifters where the, the brake lever is made of cast aluminium, but on these carbon fiber ones here, the lack of that little plastic insert to kind of reduce friction, that makes me a little bit uneasy. You can see here that after around 100 miles or so of riding, there's already a little divot forming in the carbon fiber where it interfaces with that aluminium lever arm in there. Now, it might not get any worse or ever become an issue, really. Um, but uh, if, it, if it does, I'll just end up kind of gluing a little piece of plastic or a aluminium up in there to prevent any any further wear. I think it's it should be a relatively easy fix, in my opinion. But if I do end up kind of taking that road, uh, yeah, I'll definitely definitely keep you lot posted. So um, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, if you want to check out any of the Sensar stuff that I've uh, kind of demoed or talked about in this video, I've left a link in the description to their official store on AliExpress. So uh, yeah. Check that out if you if you fancy it. Um, anyway, that's all that we've got time for. So um, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this uh, little thing that I've I've made um, for you. Uh, <laughs> and if you've got any questions or any comments about this particular carbon group set that I've installed here, or, or group sets in general, then leave me a comment down below, and I'll try my best to get back to you. Um, and as I mentioned in the last video, I genuinely love reading the comments. So d do leave me one and uh, yeah, I'll try, I'll, try and, I'll try and have a chat, have a chat with you lot. Um, anyway, that's it. So I guess I'll see you uh, in the next one of these that I make. So yeah, see you later. Ciao, ciao. Wow. 
One last thing before you go, uh, the carbon Garmin mount that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Here it is from a company called Z Race from AliExpress. Don't, don't buy it. I had it on the bike about a month, maybe two, and you'll see it's already completely given out. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's terrible, as they say on the, <laughs> on the continent. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. See you later.